Hi everybody, my name is Rhys Barber, I'm the Audiologist here at Audiology Associates. Thank you very much for watching our video today. If you've never come across one of our videos before, or if you haven't looked at the channel before, what we do here is post earwax removal videos. We post new ones every Tuesday and every Friday. So if you have any questions about the video that you go out to watch, then pop them into the comment section below, and that way then the most popular questions we can answer at the end of the week. So enjoy the video, and I shall see you at the end. Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thank you very much for watching our earwax removal compilation video today. Uh, we've got two patients in this video. So this is the first patient. They've come through, this gentleman's got a little bit of mild discomfort, uh, reduced hearing in uh, in both ears. So what we can see here is a dry piece of, uh, of wax there just lodged in the ear canal. You can see how the ear canal isn't quite that kind of normal circular shape. You've got this more of a kind of an oval shape, so quite a thin, uh, thin ear canal. Just trying to get a grip on this dry wax here. There we go, you can see that that was lodged perfectly into the shape of the canal. So that wax is gone, so we've actually cleared the uh, offending wax from the canal. So just doing a little bit of tidying up now at the entrance. Here we are, just removing a couple of little bits of, uh, finer bits of debris there. It isn't always necessary to do this. It's, uh, you know, it, if it's not gonna cause the patient any discomfort, if it's not too deep in the ear canal, we'll normally clear it away. If it was a lot deeper in the canal and it wasn't really causing any problems, we would just leave it there. I know lots of people ask, you know, you're not doing a thorough job, there needs to you know, why do you not remove all the wax? It's not necessary. Uh, you know, your ear should have some wax in it, and the whole point of us doing this is to get this person hearing better. You can see lovely shiny eardrum there. So by removing that first piece of wax, this patient would have heard a lot, lot better. Um, taking some of the other wax away is uncomfortable, and you risk damaging the ear canal walls, which can cause even further problems. So it's, uh, it's not always a great idea to remove everything. So this is the same patient now, but the second ear. And you can see that this wax looks a little bit softer. It uh, looks a little bit more uh, tacky and sticky. So just using the Jobson horn now to remove this. For suction, um, most practitioners of suction prefer the ear wax to be slightly harder. Um, just because you can actually go in, grab a piece and remove it. When it's this uh, very soft and sticky, kind of tacky nature to wax, it tends to take a little bit longer to remove um, and you don't tend to get such a good grip. So if patients have used things like, if they've used a lot of wax softening drops um, or they've used things like per, you know, a peroxide based product, things like Otex, Urex, so they use it here in the UK, uh, it tends to really dissolve the wax, turns it to a mush. Uh, what you're gonna do then is, as we are here on this patient, you're gonna be working a lot closer to the ear canal walls uh, because you're gonna to have to take this off the canal walls to get, get, uh, to get it out, which can be really uncomfortable for the patient. So you have to remember our patients uh, are not sedated, they're not anesthetized, so they're fully awake and they feel every sensation in the ear. In this kind of procedure, the worst uh, sensation they tend to get is maybe a mild pinching or mild scratching sensation. Obviously, if you're really rough and you're, and you're really kind of jabbing into the ear canal, then that can be really painful. Um, and as you know here, we, we try and always, foremost on the mind is patient comfort. So we tend to, uh, tend to light the wax a little bit harder. So you can see we're working down about a third of the way into the ear canal now. You can see the wax is getting sucked into the uh, into the zona tube, but because it's so sticky, as you can see with this piece here, it just stretches. Um, so rather than sort of pulling a whole chunk out, you just sort of mold the wax and stretch it. Now sometimes you can go in there with a Jobson horn and that will sometimes help you to get this out. Um, from my personal experience with uh, this type of tacky, sticky wax, it sometimes always, it, it just seems to cause more mess sometimes when you go in with a Jobson horn. 
And as you can see with this patient, they've got a piece that's very, very deep. So this is uh, just in front of the eardrum. Uh, so you wouldn't end the tain going in this deep with a, with a Jobson. Uh, just because to try and get behind that wax, which is the point of the Jobson, is to get behind it, bring it forwards. Uh, you would actually be touching the eardrum, uh, which is which is going to be re really painful and a massive risk of perforation to the eardrum then. Trying to unstick this now from the canal walls. There we go, it's just starting to move. You can see how, see how sticky that is, how stuck it is to the canal walls. You could use a little bit of olive oil, uh, which will sometimes reduce the uh, adhesion. There we go, that's the piece we were trying to get to. You can see we've got another piece which is just in front of the uh, just in front of the eardrum there. There you go. So I'm going to leave that sticky piece to attach to the eardrum. It's going to be so sticky that it would cause damage to the eardrum. So I'd rather let, you know, baths and showers will wash that away. I'd rather let some, you know, that that sort of naturally come away on its own. Uh, so this is our second patient. So you can see much harder earwax. And can you see the difference? As soon as you get a grip on this harder wax, you start to take it away in, in larger chunks. So you can see this is drier. Getting a grip on it with the Zolna tube and then maneuvering this out of the ear canal. It's a little bit of dry skin by the looks of it attached to the end of this, which is just holding it and stopping it from coming out. So this is the reason this person's wax is built up. See just how dark that wax is. It's all quite old uh, wax there as well. There we are, got a good grip on it. You can see how much quicker that was to remove. Um, so much easier to come away. The eardrum looks nice and healthy. Uh, this is the other ear. You can see lots of bits of hair on the outer part of the ear canal, probably from either ear hair trims or haircuts. Uh, but yeah, it looks nice and, uh, nice and solid on this side as well. So this is still the standard size ulna tube we're using here. There we are, just lifting the base there, getting a better grip. You can see how much quicker it is, coming away a lot more nicely. Okay, we've got a, uh, a big dark hair in here, so uh, you can. I just wanted to show you how difficult it is to actually remove a hair using suction. You can see, you're getting a grip on this hair and it's flicking back and forth. There we are, we've got the hair and that little bit of dry skin. And there's the eardrum there. And there we are, this is what we removed from the uh, second patient. So uh, first piece of wax is from the first ear, second from the second ear. In centimeters and inches. Thank you very much for watching our video today. If you did enjoy the video, then please like. If you're not subscribed already and you'd like to do so, you can click the subscribe button here. If you'd like to check out some more of our videos, they're also up there. Now, if you want to follow us, you can do on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also check our website if you want to know a little bit more about us. As always, guys, until the next time, take care.